Good afternoon. I am Alan Harden, and I serve as minister to Beverly Unitarian Church. I welcome each of you into this sanctuary in our castle home and into the embrace of this warm and loving congregation. I particularly welcome those of you who join us over the internet, and I am pleased you found a way to be here. Just to instruct all the people, if you want to wave at the people on Zoom, the camera is up there. It's not on the screen. <laughs> this church and our Unitarian Universalist faith are places of welcome, of sharing, of acceptance, of inquiry, and of peace. This is important to us today because it was always important to Claire Karcher. Claire was an active member of our congregation and deeply appreciated our openness to different ideas, to a variety of beliefs, and to a diverse blend of people. Instead of teaching dogma or creed, we you use encourage each congregant to embark on an ongoing search for truth and meaning to find their own way to understand life. I will now light the flaming chalice, the ritual symbol of our UU faith, in honor and in memory of Claire's trust in this community. We light this chalice in honor of life's sacred dance of living and dying. May its flame remind us of those who have passed to us fragments of holiness. May it remind us that we too are participants in the dance. On behalf of Claire's children, Karen, and I have to partially give Karen's apologies, in the next building next door, hopefully on Zoom by now, she tested positive for COVID this morning and can't join with us. And, um, but we're struggling on and our best thoughts go to her. Anyhow, on behalf of Claire's children, Karen, Eric, Mary Rogan, Brian and Bob, and the rest of the family, I thank you for coming this day to join in celebrating her life. And that is what we will do here. We will celebrate the rich and beautiful life of our good friend, Claire, to honor and appreciate the woman we knew, giving thanks that she touched us. We join to recognize that each of our lives is better because we knew this wise, passionate, and loving woman. Yes, we do share in mourning her death, and we each need to find a way to hold the new reality that she is no longer of this world that we share. But while the story of her lived life is complete, we can continue to carry her in memory and in story, and her legacy will continue as long as her spirit resides in our hearts. As the service proceeds, we hope to share in laughter as well as in tears. And most of all, to recognize that we belong here today, together, to share in the appreciation of a very good life. Today's service will include readings and remarks from close friends and family, and a time where any of you are invited to add your story or reflection to the service. Between these, I will bring some thoughts, and we will share congregational singing of songs Claire loved. And now we will start this. Please let's join in singing Tis a Gift to be Simple, which can be found as hymn number 16 in the gray hymnals, which you can hopefully find distributed around these seats. Please rise if you are able and willing.
Be seated. I invite Brian Karcher to come forward for a reading of Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm just going to find it here. I have it on my phone. One moment. Okay. Okay, it is a, it's, this is a poem that um, I don't know if mom knew it. There's a good chance she did, but I think she would have uh, would have felt this was, uh, I think it would have meant a lot to her. And she did have lots of books of poetry in the house at times. Um, I'm gonna take off the mask for this. Um, Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. And it just turned itself off. It's not the greatest. Uh, you do not have to be good. <laughs> you do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it does or what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. That's the poem. Thank you. Next is Pam Carlson. Hi there. Nearly 49 years ago, I was fortunate enough to become Claire's friend. I'd stopped teaching to stay home with my new baby, Amanda. That's how I know how long ago it was. Uh, I was finally able to join the women's consciousness raising group that met on a weekday morning right upstairs in what was known as the gold room it no longer exists. Claire would pick Amanda and me up before car seats in her Volkswagen bus. <laughs> she used that bus to do a lot of good, including carting all these kids around. Uh, she gave people rides and every week she went to the hostess thrift store and filled that van up with bread and whatever hostess had and then she drove around and delivered to everybody's house. 
Claire was 10 years older than me. And as a new mom, I was very much in need of her mother wisdom built on all of her life experience. I remember being in that group upstairs with this new baby and I told the women, my new purpose in life is to make every day of this little girl's life happy. And the women just looked at me <laughs> like I was crazy. They didn't know how to respond. And then Claire started laughing. <laughs> you know, this is a serious women's group, right? And she, can you hear her laugh? And she's laughing and laughing. And she just says, good luck with that one, Pam. <laughs> she even got me laughing at myself. Claire was popular, I mean, obviously. When you are friends and raised and by a popular person, it can be hard to feel special to them because you know that so many people are important to them. But Claire's wingspan was so wide, she was able to take in a lot of people. It was crowded under there but she had the capacity to be present with whoever she was with at that moment. You must know how important you were to her. I do. And if I went to her with a sadness, she'd look me in the eye and say, I'm so sorry. She didn't try to fix things or give advice. What she gave was a heartfelt presence that understood and never judged. People were so important to Claire, all people. And the first principle of our religion is to believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every person. She really embraced that one. She really loved being a Unitarian Universalist and I would only hear her talk badly about one thing, her experience in the Catholic Church. She was deeply scarred by that, but she didn't allow that pain to turn her into a negative person. She was anything but. Claire was known for her hugs and kisses. I'm not talking about a peck on the cheek or one of those half scooted hugs. Oh no, I'm talking about a full on hug and smooch. And raise your hand if you were ever the beneficiary of a, Look at that, a big Claire hug and smooch. And I can remember she was hugging before people around here were hugging, you know, and they'd see Claire coming and go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Claire was pretty irresistible. She really was. Um, I'm reading a book right now called 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. And I think Claire lived the key messages in this book. She lived unafraid. When she loved somebody, she told them. She didn't care if they didn't love her back. She said, I love you. Um, she was extremely generous and she wisely gave exactly what she wanted for herself, which was love and compassion. Those are the things that really matter while living our very impermanent lives. Those are the things that allow us to look back on our lives as a success. And Claire's life, your mom's life, was just that, one very loving success. That's all. I am gonna switch the order so we don't have to test Pam's facility to speak and then run back and do the tech shift. We're gonna ask uh, Liana Mitchell to speak now and Janice Bailey will be next. Pam is doing double duty here today. Hi. Hi. My name is Leanna Mitchell. Wait a minute, trying to get all tangled here. That's okay. Yeah, let's bring this down to your. It helps if you just really go into it. Okay. 
I'm a little nervous right now, but give me a minute. I'll be okay. Okay. So I met Claire years ago, years ago. And when she came in, she was just such a lovely woman. I'm saying, man, she was just smiling all the time. She wanted to join the organization that I volunteer at. And when she got there, uh, I was one of the people to help train her when she started. We work, we uh, volunteer with an organi organization that see people from all walks of life, no matter what. And they are able to get free medical, they get free dental. We even get them the attorneys to talk to it. And I mean, the, the lawyers that sit downtown come there and volunteer with us so that, you know, those members can you know, see somebody and get answers to whatever they're going through. They can also get the light and the gas. So Claire wanted to do some things. So I told her, okay, how about you be an advocate? So she said, okay. So she said, what she did was first, she started doing transportation, taking people to different places, you know, helping the organization pick up stuff, deliver stuff. Then she started, the advocacy she did was taking members to the dentist, the doctors, on appointments if we have to go downtown and talk to an attorney, or even if it just meant taking somebody home. So Claire came in and she was always, I'm telling y'all, she was always smiling. I always seen a smile on her face. Now she did one time, didn't have that smile. Once, that's the only time I didn't see a smile. This person made her upset. And boy, you talking about somebody getting on that person because they didn't need to do what they did for her to be that upset. So Claire used to take me home too. Now I used to tell everybody two things Claire knew. How to, what well, three, how to get to MWA, how to take me home and how to get home. So. Through the years that she was there, those things I knew she knew. So when she got where I didn't know, you know, she wasn't, she didn't, she used to talk about her kids all the time. She used to tell me everything about y'all and your daddy. We just talk, talk, talk all the time. Every time she see me, we start talking and we, then I got to know all everything she was doing. I said, okay. Then she got to know all me too. She got to know all about my kids and everything going on. So Claire, come in and then when there's nothing at all for Claire to do, Claire did fouling. We have cards, they like those six by, four by six cards. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of them. But when, when someone come in and we do the card for them, we do two cards for them, we have to foul those cards somewhere. And she had that master down. She would sit down, get the whole thing. You ain't have to tell her to nothing. If it's nothing else she doing with the, with the car, she sit down and she do all the fouling and correct. And we be saying, okay, we don't need nobody else to foul cause she's doing the boxes and everything's correct. So y'all leave the box alone, let her do the boxes. So she would do all the boxes for us. And um, she took me home one day the you know because it was late we wanted to stop at the house and we went in the house and i said claire she said uh i got a cat now i'm allergic to cats so i tried not to touch him or get bam so that worked out good because i didn't have to touch it but one cat she had loved to get on the kitchen table that cat loved the table i said claire we can't do nothing with the cat there she said well, just move. I said, no, I can't touch that cat. You have to do that. So what she did was, I said, I know how you keep your cat off the table. She said, how? I said, you know what? You got some black pepper? She said, yeah. Sprinkle some on the table. Sprinkle some in the chair. We, so when the cat moved and we sprinkled and we went in the front room, when we come back, the cat just looking, wondering what happened. Because <laughs> get on the table we were just laughing at the cat so she she said there she said oh that works i said yeah it does it keeps the smell keeps them away from getting on the table because they wouldn't let us you know sit down and have dinner or nothing because we was going to eat so she did things for a long time i mean she did the deliveries for the holiday for thanksgiving for christmas for the toys she would help deliver Food. She would help, 
do whatever it is, you know, that was needed of her. And she didn't blink an eye. She wasn't saying, no, I ain't doing nothing or I'm too tired. But, and she smiled all the time. And so when I got a chance to see her, I didn't know she had really got down and sick. And so her daughters told me um, where she was at. And it kind of, I was sad. I really was, because I knew I was finna not be able to be around somebody I love so much. Really, really loved her. I really did. She is, she is my heart. I'm telling y'all, I really, really miss her. I miss her every day. I think of her all the time. And all I can remember is this smile she have on her face, this wonderful smile when she come in that door and she would ask me questions and she learned how to do, um, she learned how to put all the people information in their files because everybody had a file. She learned how to put all that in the files. So she was a smart lady, I'm telling y'all. She was a really smart lady to do the things she did as old as she was and to keep going and keep, she liked the energy bunny. She didn't stop, she just kept going and kept going. So we got along very well. And so when I, when I, after she was out and I would visit her and get a chance to see her, her daughter's name, they are so sweet y'all, I'm telling you. They would call me, they would come get me, her brother, her, her, her son. I mean, her, her daughters and her son would, would come get me and take me so I can see her and I get to visit her and sit with her while she was, you know, in the nursing home. And I told her, dog, you in a really nice place. So yeah, so it was a picture somewhere where we was having lunch that day and we took that picture together because we decided we are gonna go up there and have some lunch with her. And we wasn't doing nothing else. We just wanted to see and spend the day with her. But she is a wonderful person. She did a whole lot for the people that was unfortunate and unable to do those things, you know. And she helped in a clothing uh, distribution. She helped uh, pack clothes or find clothes for those uh, that had no clothing and they needed clothes for their kids or some loved one. She helped do all that stuff. In fact, she helped build it. That's what I say. She helped build the organization. And I'm gonna tell you, they have lost a lot when they lost her, a lot. She's a wonderful person and her kids are so wonderful. I love them. <laughs> so I thank y'all for hearing what I had to say about her. And believe me, it's a lot of more people at the organization that loves her. They really do. All right, thank y'all. Thank you. And now, this is an act of faith, maybe. <laughs> we will see if we can link in Janice Bailey from New Orleans. Good afternoon, everyone. My, my, my. Can you hear me? Pastor, can you hear me? Claire and I were met in 1980 and 1991, and what a joy she was to my life. She was such a sweet woman. She, you know, what I my way of describing Claire was to say that she uh, was. One woman that I knew had unconditional love for any and everything she met. She had a hard time with a spider if it was in her way and she was trying to get it in the door and the spider was on the, the doorstep. She would do all she could not to step on that spider before she got in that house. She just, she loved the world. She loved living. She she didn't take it for granted. She appreciated it and she 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 did what she could to make the world a better place where she had been. She, she just was a wonderful human being. And then she, she, she gave so much to the people around her that she loved and cared about. Her children, I'll never forget just being invited to her house. I, I had moved to Chicago 
and had no family there. And Claire's family became my family. It wasn't a Thanksgiving, a Christmas, a holiday of any kind. I don't care what kind it was that I wasn't at Claire's house, a uh, part of whatever was going on. And then we know each other so well that one of the things we also decided to do was to travel. We, we would pack up a suitcase and take off. <laughs> she loved to just have a good life and she did. She knew how to live. And it was a joy to share that with her. The hardest thing for me to do was to come to New Orleans when um, I had to raise my grandchildren and it was a better place to raise them here at home than in Chicago. Because I knew I wouldn't get to see her all the time and be a part of her life every day. But I did what I had to do and I miss her so much because she, she just, no matter who you were, she gave. And the greatest thing she gave was her love and caring. She cared and you knew she cared. So I miss her. And I thank you all so much for taking a moment to listen to what I have to say. You all have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Can she hear me now? Janice, yes, I can hear you. I want you to know that the Karcher children all tried to stand up and wave at you and say hi. <laughs> um, oh, I love them so much. They are—they were such a gift to me when I lived in Chicago. Such a gift because right. they're so I, much like their mother. Oh, we they're can't so hear much you like now. their mother. That was your one shot. <laughs> now, returning to our service here. I invite you all to rise, if you're willing and able, to sing Turn, Turn, Turn. It's not in the hymnal. The lyrics are in your order of service.
Please be seated if you haven't done so already. I will start with a short poem by Rashani Ri. There is a brokenness out of which comes the unbroken, a shatteredness out of which blooms the unshatterable. There is a sorrow beyond all grief which leads to joy and a fragility out of whose depths emerges strength. There is a hollow space too vast for words through which we pass with each loss, out of whose darkness we are sanctified into being. There is a cry deeper than all sound whose serrated edges cut the heart as we break open the place inside which is unbreakable and whole while learning to sing. Death hurts for we survivors, but our hearts are not really broken even when they feel that way. Our sorrow tells us that we are alive, that we are feeling, and that we have loved deeply enough so that our hearts feel broken. We will miss Claire. For some of us, coming to terms with her absence will be a long and hard process. She leaves a hole in this world, a hole nobody can fill. Her body, her humor, her wisdom, her inner peace, her commitment to cause, her honesty, those are gone also. But we each hold a piece of Claire in our memory and in what we have learned from her. And this will continue as long as we do. We will share what we know as we remember it and tell tales about what was good and what might have been not so good about life with Claire. I hope that many stories will be told today. We honor her by remembering her. And this is what will keep much of Claire alive in our hearts. Stories are for joining the past to the future. Stories are for those late hours in the night when you can't remember how you got from where you were to where you are. Stories are for eternity when memory is erased, when there is nothing to remember except the story. Over time, as we remember and relive parts of Claire's life, her stories will gradually become your stories and her life part of your life. And this is how it should be. Claire gets a piece of immortality, and we each just get to be better and wiser people. Better, that is, if we learn from the stories. So we mourn, and then we remember, and then we sing. In the end, we realize that we are grateful. The new reality that we have lost a mother and a friend means that we had a beloved mother and friend to lose. We gain so much through these relationships that we are better. We are enriched. We are transformed by the gifts she brought into our lives. In so many ways, Claire continues to live on in the hearts and souls of each of the persons she touched. This is legacy. When any one of us passes on, it's a reminder to consider our own mortality, to think about our own lifetime and the inevitability that we also will end. Mary Oliver asked, tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do? with your one wild and precious life. Claire Karcher was an exemplar of living intentionally and living well. She brought commitment and presence to her days with us. I never met Claire personally, but I assure you that I've only heard kind and gentle reports about her from those who did know her. Her name brings a smile to so many faces. I will leave it to others to tell the stories, and I am eager to hear and learn from them. 
May each of us in our own way find inspiration in Claire's life. May we learn to accept her death. May we resolve to find peace within ourselves, in our own lives. May we stay true to what we know to be important and live through and for our blessings. Claire Carter lived a good life. May we do the same. We will now move to reflections and readings from her other four children. That's if it's possible for Karen to do so. Do we know? Karen is with us. So if we can hook her up. Okay. Karen, we're going to move on because we're having audio troubles. Um, Mary? Like Brian, I have no idea if mom knew this, had ever heard it before, um, and also I have it on my phone. Um, but I can imagine mom reading this to me in her voice. Um, she was very courageous and um, accepting of everybody and, and just wanted people to be themselves and she wanted to be herself. So this is a poem by Chief Tecumseh of the Shawnee. Imagine Claire reading this. <laughs> so live your life that the fear of death can never enter your heart. Trouble no one about their religion, respect others in their view and demand that they respect yours. Love your life, perfect your life, Beautify all things in your life. Seek to make your life long and its purpose in the service of your people. Prepare a noble death song for the day when you go over the great divide. Now that's more Chief Tecumseh, but I can even imagine her saying that. Okay. Always give a word or a sign of salute when meeting or passing a friend I'm getting that feedback a little bit. Okay. When meeting or passing a friend, even a stranger, when in a lonely place, show respect to all people and grovel to none. When you arise in the morning, give thanks for the food and for the joy of living. If you see no reason for giving thanks, the fault lies only in yourself. <laughs> Abuse no one and no thing 
for abuse turns the wise ones to fools and robs the spirit of its vision. When it comes your time to die, be not like those, oops, hang on. Be not like those whose hearts are filled with the fear of death so that whenever their time comes, they weep and pray for a little more time to live their lives over again in a different way. Sing your death song and die like a hero going home. That's my mom. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, I'm Eric. I'm one of Claire's sons. Uh, I didn't prepare anything, but uh, I just want to speak about the woman she was uh, as I can. Uh, first, I want to, I'm very thankful to God that I got the last four years with her. Um, it was a time of great peace for me and healing and a time when I could be close to her like I hadn't been for for decades, literally. Uh, so I'm so grateful for the last four years at Grace Point uh, when I really got to connect with her again. And uh, we talked about uh, pain that we shared and, uh, and brought us to a lot of peace. Uh, when I'd go to see her there, uh, when we, she first arrived, uh, the first thing would be uh, her saying, okay, it's time to go. All her stuff would be packed. Everything would be on the bed, ready to go. There'd be nothing in any drawers. And it was time to go. <laughs> uh, fortunately, shortly after that, because of the time I arrived, uh, it was time for dinner. So we went to dinner together and sat and ate. And uh, while she was preoccupied with the uh, nurses, I'd sneak back and put everything back in the drawers. <laughs> and that went on for, for several months. Uh, before she finally got to be comfortable there. Um, I just wanna share a picture of her. Uh, um, we used to do uh, camping trips. Oh, first, my family. Um, I am so grateful to my mom for loving my dad enough for in nine years to give me life and to give me four of the oh, kindest, most wonderful people that I could know. Uh, we used to camp a lot when we were kids. We used to go cross country, get in our Volkswagen bus, Pam talked about, would all pack in there with our dog Tippy, and we'd go to uh, South Dakota or around the Great Lakes or back to Pennsylvania, but it was one of the most happy times of my life. And uh, just want to relate something that is typical of my mom. <laughs> um, generally, my father started the fire sometimes at assist, but uh, one time, I don't know if my father wasn't available, but my mom decided to take on building the fire herself. And uh, she uh, elected to use uh, Coleman fuel, which is white gas. And uh, she uh, pretty much seemed to me to be emptying the entire bottle into the fire circle. And uh, I was terrified and still so amused <laughs> that I didn't go towards her or stop her. And I watched her lower the the match to the flame and saw her be completely engulfed in flame. She disappeared for a second and after there was an explosion and it just surrounded her. And she walked back towards me as I was walking towards her with her eyebrows singed. And she just smiled her smile and laughed her laugh. It's always a self-deprecating laugh. Uh, she was one of the kindest people you'd ever want to know and uh, had incredible humility. Uh, she never judged anybody. She never uh, put anybody any higher or any lower than anybody else. 
uh, people were just people, and uh, and that's uh, the way she saw everybody. And the one thing that she thought of people having in common was some sometime they were going to need somebody, and she would hope to be that person. So uh, that's all I have to share. Uh, I'm so uh, grateful to be raised by such a wonderful woman and be part of uh, such a wonderful family as I have. Thank you. Oh, I was gonna tell that fire story, but that's all awesome. <laughs> You did a much better job than I would have. <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of my favorite memories of her too. <clears throat> I uh, just want to talk a little bit. I, I'm Bob. I'm the youngest and the baldest of the family. Um, <laughs> take after my grandpa. Uh, both of them, actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, we were very gifted to be brought up in a family that valued humor as much as it did. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Dad had a much more of a sort of cerebral, sort of out there. He loved like uh, George Carlin and uh, Bob Newhart. Mom was much more earthy. She was much more of a Stanley and Ollie kind of gal. Um, one of my favorite memories of her was uh, we were going to go see a movie. I think it was What Lies Beneath, the thriller with uh, Harrison Ford. He was trying to kill Michelle Pfeiffer. And we got there. Either we had the dates wrong or something. We ended up watching Scary Movie, uh, which is a very body R-rated movie designed for young people. And mom was laughing her butt off. She was just <laughs> laughing. Tears were streaming down her face. Um, other favorite memory involving a movie was uh, she apparently, I don't know if she wandered into a theater by herself, but she saw the movie, The Crow, uh, the, the Brandon Lee movie with all, and she was like, and that movie has like a pounding industrial heavy metal soundtrack. And I was just trying to imagine my mom and I, asked her about it and she's like oh i liked it it reminded me of dracula i was like okay sure it's, um one other little humorous favorite memory um she loved uh, excitement uh, and far she and just living uh life and one of the last times we were together for a um uh, uh, uh reunion in erie and we went to uh, Waldemere, which if you're ever in Pennsylvania is a fantastic little amusement park. And they have a roller coaster called the Ridge Racer 2, I believe. And we rode on it together and she came off the ride and her hair was this huge gray poof on her head, like large Marge from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> and she's had this big smile on her face. Like, that was funny. <laughs> um, but I also um, speak in terms of, of lack of judgment. Um, our house was one of those houses in the neighborhood where anyone could show up. Um, just didn't matter who they were, what they were wearing. Uh, they were welcome. They were welcome to anything in the fridge. Um, mom was a bit of a, I call her sort of the mistress of the overshare. She would sometimes <laughs> corner one of my friends who may or may not have been messed up on something and just go into a weird story from her personal life and then they would just like your mom talk to me for a while yeah she does that she does that but um yeah, eternally thankful to have grown up in that uh wacky house with sock fights and singing and rules about not singing at the table because that was the one rule Cannot sing at the table. Sing up, oh, there goes. <laughs> there goes one of the pictures. We got pretty far before that happened. Anyway, so eternally thankful to have grown up in a house where um, everyone was welcome. And mom was really the reason why that was the case. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Speaking of oversharing, <laughs> is this working? Not really.
speaking of oversharing, it's your turn, if you wish. If anybody in the congregation has, oh, can Karen speak now? I Thank can. You. Thank you for I'm reminding me. I'm on Pam's me. phone. You Thank can. you, Pam. You can unmute us. Hey, you guys. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, so I I ended up with COVID this morning or tested positive, so I can't be in there with you. Um, my first time as far as I know, which is amazing. Um, I mainly wanted to share how much of a teacher my mom was. Um, she taught me to do first aid early on, which being the oldest was a useful thing to know. Um, we had our fair share of various injuries over the course of time. Um, she taught me how to find a leak in a bike tire, in a bike inner tube, which is a useful skill. And she taught me to drive stick in our Volkswagen bus, which um, took a lot of patience on her part. And uh, when I stalled it out on the railroad tracks on the way home from a lesson, she helped me not to panic and get off the tracks. Um, she, in her work life, she taught new mothers how to, to, to take care of their new babies. She taught um, family members to be caregivers and, and do wound care and various other things when they had elderly or infirm family that needed help. And uh, when she finally retired from Cook County Public Health, um, she taught certified nursing assistants at um, at Daly College for several years and and passed along that caring that was so much a part of her to I've, I have no idea how many people, but I'm sure they were the better for her training. So um, she taught me persistence, though I don't always do as good of a job at it as I would like to. Um, and she taught me that you have to take, take people as individuals, that uh, you can't make judgments about people based on looking at them or what they say or anything else. You have to, you have to respond to people as individuals. And that's a really valuable lesson that I think more people should, should take in. Um, and mostly she's taught me to be grateful, to be grateful for everything we have in the world and and the good that, that is a big part of my life comes from that, the gratitude that I felt. Um, so thank you so much for coming and sharing. And um, I'm going to stop spreading germs on Pam's phone now. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. That's rough. I knew roughly what I wanted to say. Okay. Hey. Now it is time that if anybody in the room has something oh. they would like to add or say or make any contribution, this is your time. We can bring a microphone to you. This one's working. That one might be. Greg's very good at running the mic. He's trained. I don't think that's going to help with. Good afternoon. Yeah. And I'm Garnet Fay, and was uh, blessed to know uh, the person of honor uh, today for a number of years. She was a dedicated host, hostess uh, to so many, uh, very active in our Christmas House International program for a number of years. Uh, people got to know her cats, even if they uh, uh, didn't know cats before, they knew once they'd stayed with, with Claire. Uh, she uh, loved justice. She went to Springfield with us to lobby against the death penalty, uh, lobby for abolition, and of course, we eventually won that fight, and we need to keep working on that. Uh, Claire uh, emoted care and joy 
And that's something that uh, everyone here, I think, has felt and a number have expressed. Thank you for sharing today. Who just spoke? You don't have to leave, I'm safe. The line here. I'm Jean Robinson. Um, not much has been said about Claire's uh, professional life. I think she was a wonderful public health nurse. And that respect that she had for every individual was reflected in a story she told me once that she wanted to convince the families that she was visiting, often new moms uh, with kids that were, had been just deemed at risk, that they deserved, their time was valuable too, and they didn't have to go down to Cook County and lose a whole day sitting in a clinic, that they could make an appointment. And so appointments not in the habits of the <coughs> poor clients she worked with. So she, out of her own pocket, I'm sure, gave a lot of alarm clocks to patients so that they could make those appointments. And remember those little free calendars you could get at Hallmark stores or whatever? She gave out dozens, maybe hundreds, of those little pocket calendars so that people could uh, put down appointments and realize their time was valuable. Um, on a personal note, we've already identified a lot of her skills from repairing bike tires to uh, lots of other things. She was a wonderful massage therapist and we had this uh, service auction in church and so I several years bought massages by Claire and I loved them so much then my husband started giving me massages by Claire for presents. She'd come with her table and set it up in our house and uh, it, was, it was wonderful, of course. We talked a lot before and after the massage, too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth O'Grady, and I just want to say a word of what Claire meant to our church. She was just a pillar of kindness, and you could always count on her. So one morning, Pam, right back there, she gets up and she says, we need more teachers for our church school and Claire was the teacher and my daughter Sheila volunteered and Sheila was a junior in high school at the time and Claire treated her like an adult. I so appreciated that. She was just lovely. I just remember going places with her in her car. I don't know. She just, she just taught me a lot too. She was a beautiful person. My name is Betsy, and um, Claire was active with Unity and Diversity, the South Siders for Peace, the Women of the Castle, and when Midwest workers had fundraisers, she would come here and ask for, uh, can, can you give a donation? You know, Midwest Workers is having a fundraiser and she explained the fundraiser and everything. And some of the fundraisers they had were expensive, so I just gave a donation. But, but she was a wonderful person. And when she moved into the uh, retirement complex or whatever you call it, you know, I didn't see her, so I missed her at church, and I didn't go there to see her, maybe I should have, I, I don't know, but we'll miss her. Um. Hi, everyone. I'm not in the congregation. I know the five extraordinary children of Claire, who her legacy will be carried on beautifully. Uh, I was one of the lucky recipients of her oversharing. Um, I won't say if I was messed up or not. I was. Um, but uh, just to show you the depths of her care and kindness and wanting everyone to be taken care of, I moved in with Bob, her son. We had an apartment on the north side. She was so kind, invited me over all the time. I went to many, many more meals than I should have. And we were driving home one night and we're at the part where you're gonna get on, turn to get on the 57. And I say to Bob, 
I think your mom is behind us in the car, like chasing us. He's like, oh, so we pull over and she's like, I gave you leftovers, you left them. She had chased us for like three miles so that Bob had these leftovers to take. I thought the depth of the kindness and the love, I would, you know. So she burned away a lot of cheap cynicism that I had about life and I am deeply, deeply thankful to her, so. All right. Does anybody on Zoom want to share? Can you now do chat with them? If so, tell Pam via the chat. Okay, I don't think we're getting any takers. So let's finish the service. Thank you all. Contributions. May we learn to hold death before us without fear and without falter, and remember to move forward with the vital task of living now. And as we turn back to our own lives, remember that we do just have this one wild and precious life, and that living it well with grace and caring is the task of each of us here. Claire Karcher did this well. Now please rise, if you're willing and able, to join in our closing this service by singing hymn number 118, This Little Light of Mine. It works. Oh, do I spray it with Lysol or? No, it's an antibacterial way. Oh, okay. Shine this little light of mine. I'm going to let it. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Our service is complete. Go in peace, go in hope. Go in grace and go in love. And please remain and join in sharing and conviviality in the back of the room. I <laughs> <laughs>